Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Afro Nurse and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be discussing naloxone. All right, so what is the pharmacologic action of this particular drug? So naloxone is an opioid antagonist. Uh, so what exactly, what, what does that mean? So it blocks the effect of opioids, um, like central nervous system depression and respiratory depression without producing any agonist effect. Um, so to put it bluntly, or to put it more simply, it works against opioids. Um, opioids elicit, um, somewhat of a, um, not necessarily a sedative effect, um, but a pain relieving effect um, because they mimic the actions of our body's endorphins. So what naloxone does is that it blocks that. It blocks the receptors and it limits the effect um, that opioids have on the body. So kind of going in line with the pharmacologic action, the therapeutic action is that naloxone reverses the effect of opioid overdose. So medication administration, I have a lot of information on the screen. Feel free to pause it if you want to actually read through all of it. I'm going to touch on a couple of things. The first thing to notice is that naloxone can be administered in a lot of different ways. It can be administered IV, which is the picture that you see on the screen. It can be administered as an auto injector, and it also can be administered as a nasal spray. Um, in addition to those methods, it can also be administered um, in terms of like the route. So it can be administered IV, like I stated before, intramuscular, subcutaneously, um, and I do believe those are the last, the, the, the main one. So IV, intramuscular, subcutaneous, um, nasal, and auto injector. We can count that as intramuscular, if you will. Um, there are four particular reasons why the naloxone would be administered for post-op opioid induced respiratory depression for opioid induced respiratory depression during chronic opioid use, chronic meaning more than one week, uh, for overdose obviously of opioids and for opioid induced uh, pruritus. And for each of these, there are set parameters and dosage for adults, uh, for children, for neonates. So again, if you wanna kind of pause it and read through the different um, administrations, you can go ahead and do that. So what are contraindications for uh, naloxone? So the main thing is that if you're allergic to the drug, um, that's a contraindication. So hypersensitivity, um, that's something that we always wanna make sure that we are aware of when we are prescribing any type of medication. Now, what kind of patients should this drug or should this opioid antagonist be used cautiously in? Well, people with cardiovascular disease, uh, people that are physically dependent on opioids due to withdrawal or the possibility of withdrawal, um, pregnant women um, because it may cause acute withdrawal syndrome in the mother and a fetus if the mother is opioid dependent, and also in neonates as well because uh, again, it may cause acute withdrawal, sim uh, excuse me, acute withdrawal syndrome, uh, a cluster of symptoms that occur for one or two weeks when a person stops taking an addictive or prescription drugs. Um, and again, this is again, if the mother was opioid dependent. What are the complications for naloxone? So, uh, in terms of body systems, it doesn't necessarily affect, affect a lot of different systems compared to maybe other drugs. Um, nevertheless, in the cardiovascular system, it can cause ventricular arrhythmias, which is very serious, um, as well as hypertension and hypotension. 
in the genital urinate system. Uh, this drug can cause nausea and it can cause vomiting. Uh, what are some drug interactions? Again, this drug doesn't have, at least from my knowledge and from the source that I used, the Davis Drug Guide, and there aren't a lot of drug interactions or like herbal supplement interactions with this drug that can cause problems or anything of that sort. Um, but what I was able to find is that naloxone can precipitate withdrawal in patients physically dependent on opioids, which kind of gets back to what we were talking about before uh, with pregnant women or neonates who, from mothers who were dependent on opioids. Uh, larger doses may be needed to reverse the effect of um, other type of, um, excuse me, opioids like um, buprenorphine, uh, butorphanol. Um, I'm pronouncing these wrong, these words incorrectly, but a couple of these drugs here, and it also antagonizes um, post-operative opioids, which again, obviously, is the main effect of the drug. So for my nurses that are watching, what are some interventions that we should be aware of? Uh, first thing, we want to monitor respiratory rate, rhythm, and depth. We want to monitor the pulse, ECG, blood pressure, and level of consciousness frequently for three to four hours after the expected peak of blood concentration. Patients receiving opioids for more than a week are extremely sensitive to the effects of naloxone, so we want to dilute and administer in slow increments. We want to assess the patient for signs and symptoms of opioid withdrawal. Again, these symptoms and signs and symptoms include vomiting, restlessness, abdominal cramps, increased blood pressure, and temperature. And lastly, um, lack of improvement could indicate a disease process or other non-central nervous system depressants. So that's something that we will want to be aware of. For client education, as medication becomes effective, we wanna explain uh, the purpose and the effect of naloxone to the patient. We want to instruct parents and caregivers in the, for the or in the correct technique for using uh, naloxone nasally. Um, and we also want to explain the purpose and the instructions of the auto-injector Visio. The desired outcomes for this drug include adequate ventilation following opioid access, and finally alertness without significant pain or withdrawal symptoms. And that is the end of this PowerPoint for naloxone. Uh, I want to say thanks for learning. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And until next time, see Afro Nurse. Peace.